What's up on my power ass crew? The other day, out here doing a shakedown run on my Jeep after I get my front lockers and stuff put in, I've got a ding, an idea. It's been a long time since I've done a walk around of my Jeep telling you guys everything I've done to it. Years ago, when I did the first walk around, of course it was pretty well stocked. She's not exactly stocked now, but it's not built nothing radical or anything like that. So what have I done to it? Well, let's look at it and see. So there she is, 1991 Jeep Wrangler YJ. Pretty much the star of the show for the whole channel, but I've had other rigs on there as well. But this is the one that started it all. Uh, so what is it? 4.0 liter, 5-speed AX15 MP231 transfer case. Now it has 8.8 .8 forward under the back of it. Dana 30 front. Dana 30 has had locker put in, Spartan locker. It's got the posi lock, um, new bearings throughout. It's got Yukon gears and Timken bearings, new ball joints, all that fun stuff. I mean, that front axle is pretty well new at this point. And looking at it from the front, we got this cheap little winch right here that I've never hooked up. A company called Ox Beam, which used to sponsor for me all my lighting and stuff like that. Those are not Ox Beam. That is an Ox Beam uh, 52 inch right there. Ox Beam used to be one of my sponsors for all my lighting, and they had another company called Ox Mart, I think it was, that I seen it didn't last very long. I don't know if it's still around or not, but they sent me that winch right there to give it for a test run. It came in, you take a heavy winch, wrap it in styrofoam. That does not mix. So when I received it, the styrofoam was busted up on the inside of it. It was nothing like little particles I was left of from the shipping. Uh, the remote was busted out of pieces. I stuck it on my winch so I could fabricate my front bumper back in the time And I've never hooked up the winch. So that's an upcoming video how to wire up a winch and Have your controls from the inside and outside now when I wire it up I'm not going to be using the old school kind of looks like a forward starter solenoid I want to use a big chunky box style relay So it'd be easier to wire easier to control and all that fun stuff And I'll show you guys how to do that when that time comes Apparently, I still need to fabricate my fair lead. I've also got a worn A274 that I thought about putting on this. So, that would dictate on how I build my fair lead mount up front. Because the worn are front mounts. Like the bolts, if you're looking at the front of the Jeep. The worn A274s, if you look at them from the front of the Jeep like this, your bolts will be like right here and right here versus most of your general winches like this that are coming in from the bottom. That's really a decision I need to make which winch I'm going to put on the front of this. The, war the AT-74 is going to end up on the rust bucket when it finally goes together. But I keep thinking about just running on this one right here for the time being, but, you know, test that winch right there. If it works good, it may run it. I've got a new synthetic uh, rope for it. So, I don't know. I may just go ahead and run this one since it's already there. Sounds good to me, huh? See, I've got my little camera right there to video coming down off that hill right there. Pretty cool. Uh, turn it off so I don't kill my battery so I can film my other stuff with it. Good little cameras. It's not GoPros. It's a Acaso, A-K-A-S-O. I've got several of these right here because this particular model right here is the E7000LE and it's half the price of a GoPro but still does a great job. And I've got some of the um, 4000 series some of the older generation ones, they do a pretty good job. And like I said, they're a fraction of the, cost, fraction of the cost of a GoPro. And believe it or not, that mount right there is solid. So what tires am I running? Those are tread rights. Many people are familiar with, you know, talking about retreads as they call them. These are actually remolds. And what they do is, on a remold, they take and put the old carcass, let's we'll just say it's a BF Goodrich carcass or something. They'll put it in a lathe type machine. They'll spin it and shave the sidewalls and shave all the old tread off of it. Then they'll take these tires and wrap. First they'll lay a sidewall rubber on them. Then they'll wrap the outer perimeter of it. And you see this machine, I'll tell you what, I'll tag a down below and maybe a pop up here. 
I'll put the video in where I did the review on these particular uh, tires right here. But they'll take a wrap rubber around them, put them in this great big uh, mold, a uh, press heating thing. It'll come in like a big clamshell and clamp down on them, superheat them. It'll cure the rubber out, balkanize it all together, and put all your tread and your lettering on the sidewalls and stuff. Now these are a 315 75 16, pretty much the same equivalent to a 35 12 50. They're on a 16 inch wheel. The, top, the wheels actually came off of some luxury Ford car in the junkyard. I don't remember right off. Something like a Lincoln Town car or some kind of jazz like that. A lot of your Ford cars and some of your trucks, some of your trucks, some of the Fords also have a big bolt pattern. You got to watch that. But your small bolt Fords are the same bolt pattern as the Jeeps. There's a lot of Ford wheels that you can swap out with. Those tires have served me very well over many years now. And I have absolutely no complaints out of them. Lots of miles on, back and forth to Arkansas many times. Uh, they've been around, trust me. And when I link up the video, you'll see the date on it. I don't remember right off. I still got plenty of tread on. They did great, balanced good. I got no issues with them. They're great tires. Now, some of you eagle eye people may be like, hey, wait a minute, you've got wire wrapped around the frame. Yeah, actually I do, because I've got my sway bar tied up. I was out wheeling a long time ago, and I say like several years back, and I had the quick disconnects, as you can see right here to here. I disconnected them so I could get plenty of flex and articulation out of it, and I never hooked them back up. So, yeah, I just need to take that sucker off, and which is going to bring up another question. Do I have track bars? Right there, dude. No track bars. I do not run track bars. They are not needed. And you can see back there is my PosiLock cable. You can see my new bolts on my cover where I put my new Yukon gears in. And I got new tie rods, uh, new drag link, all that stuff new up underneath it. And like I said, basically a new front axle. Let's pop the hood. Something else I want to show you. We got onboard air. This does not have the external oil on it. I've actually got set up where I've got grease inside here to lubricate all the pistons and the bearings and all that fun stuff and i got a uh, build series on this particular setup right here it does a great job i've pumped up many tires i've even run a few tools off of it not when you run tools off of it it's not going to perform all that great but it kind of gets the job done but to blow up a set of tires not a problem i've got set up here i uh, don't remember what my switch is set at to be honest with you i have to go back and look at my video but we got a pressure switch right here that turns it on and off I make a pop up on the screen, but I think it's something like it kicks on at 85 and off at 90 or something. I don't remember right off. I'll pop it up on the video thing right along in here so you see it. You got a blow off valve just in case this thing doesn't work. It doesn't shut everything off. This thing builds up too much pressure. You got a pop off valve right here that releases it, keeps from blowing all my hoses up. This is an air fitting like this but i've just got these little covers over right here to keep junk from getting in there those are little covers for like uh, table legs and slide them over top of it and it seals that off keeps the junk out of it and so i've got an airport here one under the hood and my back bumper happens to be an air storage tank airline comes in right there of course it runs along the frame and right there's my other air access. And behind my seat, I keep a bag that's got my air lines, my air chucks, and my tire fixing tools, and all that kind of stuff. Y'all may notice the storage tube. I've got a spare, dry, a spare rear drive shaft inside there. It's already set up with U joints and everything. And I've got some uh, miscellaneous tools stored in there. So, kind of prepared, you know. You see right here, these mirror mounts. I made these right here. That was why, that was like, though we have my mirror mounts here, I made these myself uh, back in my first few video days. Uh, powder coated them myself, fabricated, all that stuff. Right here, if you want to put pillar lights, that's what those are for. Uh, of course, my mirrors stay put. I can take off my doors. I still got mirrors all the time. The only thing, if you guys want to copy this uh, idea, this bar right here needs to be tilted, needs to be um, straight up and down. 
I welded it flat to that plate right there, which doesn't allow enough adjustment for my mirrors to come back. Of course, this mirror right here is almost useless because I can't even see from my driver's side. But the driver's side mirror over there, this, both of them needs to come, this needs to be horizontal to the ground or perpendicular to the ground, I'm sorry. So put your level on this part right here, tilt it outward, make this right here perpendicular to the ground. And that's where you're going to tack it in place and then burn your welds in. But overall, I mean, it's good. Pretty stock. I mean, that's a one inch, inch and a quarter square tubing. I think it's like eighth inch wall, something like that. It's not very heavy. 52 inch light bar that I don't have hooked up. Uh, that actually come from Oxbeam, as I mentioned earlier, because they were used to be one of my sponsors. And they actually have very, very good lights. The only reason I got really away from Oxbeam is because I mentioned that winch a moment ago about Ox Mark, as they call it. Uh, they kept wanting to push stuff on me. Make a video of this. Make a video of this. Blah, blah, blah. And they was giving me like uh, angry grills for TJs and angry grills for JKs. Well, they just wanting to give them to me. That's like, I don't want those. I don't promote angry grills. I'm not going to do it. And so I, wouldn't want, I didn't want to promote products that you guys would not really be into. So, no. They're a great company. Great people. They stand behind their product and everything. I just didn't want to promote angry grills. My soft top is a Rampage cab top, half top, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, right here, it uses the factory YJ frame. And you take, you got snaps up underneath here. You can either unsnap it through here and fold it back. Of course, you got a lot of Velcro crap back in behind here that you got to unwrap. Plus, it's got a tanu cover that actually comes over top of all this. But right now, I'm hauling around a set of uh, trailer tires. I treat this thing like a truck. Uh, big old bag glass right here that you can unzip right there and tuck it down in behind the seats cruise down the road a little bit of open airflow going on right there uh, the windows I can't remember who they are but I'll drop a link down below uh, it's a YJ frame back in behind here I mean, it's a regular YJ frame right here but I just got new skins to go around it and I'll link those videos up as well. And you see right here is the factory YJ frame that goes with these tops right here. And you need this A-pillar piece because this comes in right there and locks in right beside there to hold all that stuff in place. So while we're inside, here's my accessory bar right here. I can hang camera from it. I got my cell phone mount right there. Um, right there is another, whoops. Another mount for cameras or whatever it is you want to hang up there. Uh, right there. Actually, we'll just turn around and get this one. Here's my hand grips right there. But it also has... Ta-da! We got light. Those are super cool. I like those a lot. If you have problems with your top puddling, like when it rains real bad and the top you know, fills up full of water puddling down... This right here is nothing but going to your box hardware store, buy some PVC pipe, and fabricate a little bit here and there. And there you go. You got a top prop. Super easy. I'll drop a link so you guys can check out that video. Uh, factory YJ soundbar, but for whatever reason, I decided I wanted to hack it up and put bigger speakers in it. They do sound a little better, but to be honest with you, the difference in sound from the factory speakers versus these little B 4 for 6s wasn't that big, so it wasn't worth a headache. So there's my posi lock cable. There's my switches. I hit that right there to arm these switches. There's my air compressor. Uh, push to start. Yep, it's got push to start. Uh, I've got a hidden switch that I activate it, which turns on the ignition. Then I push to start and it starts the Jeep up and off we go. Uh, posi lock. And right here is another cell phone mount. RAM mounts is why it's called RAM mounts. Ball right there. Uh, I've got set reports underneath here, 12 volt set report, USBs right here to charge my phone, my uh, camera batteries and stuff like that. And then we have the Pontiac Sunfire seats uh, for 1991 and up, I think it is. It's a uh, drag and drop swap. I mean, it's super, super easy. You take out the factory YJ seats, both these in place, and you're, off, you're off and running. I think the 1991 and down, the frames are a little bit different. So you got a uh, frames, meaning these right here, you got to uh, do a little bit of drilling, a little bit of fabric. No fabrication, just a little bit extra drilling on these, and you're good. And my junk, that's where I keep my lug wrench and stuff, and back in behind here. That is. 
all recovery straps and stuff like that. Uh, right there is all my little bag right there is where I keep all my air hoses and stuff for my onboard air. And right there is my sunscreen. That when I'm running topless, I put that up there to block the sun off, keep from getting baked, but got plenty of airflow. This right here also, even though you have the Tanu cover stretched out back here, this top, you got open access right here. So you can, you know, it zips up and down. Here's all the Velcro that holds all the tops in place. Both this and, uh, well, I'm sorry, this part right here and this right here has all the Velcro and straps and all that fun stuff. So over here on the passenger side, of course, I got another hand grip right here. My accessory bar comes, uh, now the accessory bar actually mounts right there to one of your spreader bars bolts and down here here's my cup holder it's got one on each side this is like a bicycle cup holder that mounts to the whole part of the frame i just cut a piece of square tubing right there to space it outward enough and then we got a piece of flat stock right here that's threaded that's a, a drilled and tapped for this quarter 20 to go into it and then this goes onto your brackets to hold your windshield but i do have a video for that as well uh new pile speakers i'm putting the dash that was a lot of fun not uh, cheap little Bluetooth radio. Locking box with a oh crap handle. And my little light right there, my interior light has an LED in it. It made a world of difference. And ta-da! Some of you may know that website. The Power Addicts YouTube channel ties to fixjeeps.com. And that's where I do a lot of my website stuff. As whenever I release a video, I may write an article to go along with the video. I haven't done that in a long time. Actually, that website has been dormant. I mean, it still gets it's pretty active as far as getting hits from Google and stuff. But I need to start writing more articles for this right here. So www.fixjeeps.com. It's got some good information on there. If you need to know your trouble codes, you do a scan on your vehicle on your Jeep, and it does a little light flashy thing. That's where everybody's getting their codes at. So I've got that there. Okay, so I've got a 31 inch spare on this, which is kind of a bad thing now that I'm running 35s. And we're going to talk more about those 35s versus 30, oh, sorry, it's a 33 inch, uh, 33 inch. But my point from getting back here, this was going to be a brake light. Obviously, this is a little tiny uh, light for backup purposes and stuff. I started it, made the mounts and stuff, never finished wiring it. Ta da! Sticker! Power Addicts! Yay! Okay, so let's talk about this right here. I kind of keep this right here off camera most of the time. This Jeep used to be a farm toy. Right there is where I got it against the tree. That hill I just came down with the intro. When we first got out here playing on my ass property, I went up that hill and got it against the tree, so I made a boo -boo. That right there. This Jeep used to be a farm toy before I got it. And somebody sucks at body work. So, I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to do with it yet. I mean, it comes all the way up into here. It's all the way down through there to about right along here is where it goes to. It's actually crumpled. You see some really shoddy weld work right there. The frame is buckled right there. And see, this right here, that's bent. So it took a hard hit on that side right there. Sometimes I think about buying a new skin, new uh, body skin, and cutting this all this right here out and putting a new skin in. But honestly, people... This ain't a show rig. It never will be a show rig. So therefore, I couldn't care less about having brand new sheet metal in it. So what I thought about doing is, is give me a piece of angle iron, heavy quarter inch angle iron, and lay me a straight edge, take off my flares, go from here to fender to fender. That'll tell me, you know, after I pull all this junk right here out, how far inward that is. Then get my hammer and start beating the body panel back out and reshaping all that stuff with the body, ha body hammers and stuff. I've got some blocks. I can probably straighten that out. And probably do something like this and i'd have to get a wire brush and grinders my cat get all that surface uh, rust off and you know prep it with was matching primer uh then i don't plan on laying a pretty paint job on it that will never happen so what i probably end up doing is a bed liner thing probably doing it lipstick red with monster liner or something like that or who knows what so yeah this right here like i said i tend to keep it off camera because it's gonna you know a lot of questions will pop up but this jeep right here used to be very very badly abused <laughs> see bondo yay people this is one of my pet peeves 
I used to work for a body shop years ago. And if you've got to lay this much Bondo in it, hammer the metal out, replace the metal, something. That is just mm, pet peeve, pet peeve. I'm going to get off that. But I can straighten that metal, bring it back out, and I've got a set of rock sliders that I can put in there. The rock, rock sliders are actually up the hill up there in my other truck. And here we go. Da da. Power axe. I got my own little QR code. These stickers right here, that if you scan those stickers, it'll take you right to the Power Axe YouTube channel. Sweet. High Point Climbing and Fitness. That is a wall in Memphis, Tennessee, that's on the outside. Well, actually, it's got an indoor climbing wall, too. But uh, I've scaled that wall right there. That was a lot of fun. I get to the top of it. You can see the top of Memphis rooftops. It's really cool. We're talking like, you know, hold on to a little tiny rock and scale on the wall. A lot of fun. Love doing that stuff. Of course, my banner. Power Axe YouTube. Yeah, yes. Now, my plan is just taking that flare off right there. Take a straight edge. Straight edge being like a really heavy gauge angle iron. Go from there to there jerking all that bondo out and seeing how far inward it is and then taking a body hammer and beating it outward as much as i possibly can and smoothing that metal out in the place where that crap weld is probably fix that um get all that rust off the surface and then taking some kind of rust inhibitor or a sealer primer or something like that and coat that right there to seal that uh, rust off so it doesn't come back and then prime it and at that point i'm probably going to do a uh, bed liner across the whole thing I don't care about body work. Here's my thing. Pretty paint causes stress. It is what it is, okay? Those people out there want bling, bling, look at me, because it's all shiny. Okay, I get it, and I understand that, okay? Because I've had some really sweet cars. I used to have a black $74 Charger, 440 car. God, that car was absolutely gorgeous, okay? But here's the deal. I was afraid to go to Walmart, Kroger's, wherever store, because I didn't want to park beside anybody and get in door dings, because that car was immaculate. Okay, it was beautiful. So I was constantly scared of somebody dinging it. I don't want that. Okay, I'm 53 years old. Stress is not part of my life, and I'm not going to do it, period. So pretty paint causes stress. Bed liner does not. So after laying the bed liner on it, I got a set of rock sliders and putting them right there. They're actually up the hill right there in the barn. Uh, probably some rear quarter armor right here. Put my other front fender on because I've got the one on the driver's side. I just never have got around to the passenger side because why I'm going to make a video showing you guys how to do it. It's not very hard, and those of you who are afraid to cut your fenders, you will not want to do that mod, or at least get you a different set of fenders or something because you do have to cut your fenders right through there to bolt to the bottom of your uh, fenders. And speaking of that, let's go over and take a look at these. There we go. These, I don't like a whole. Honestly, if these would be flush with the hood, I'd been I'd like them even more. Uh haven't put in my hood latch yet, but right up underneath here you can see right there's the edge of the metal. Uh, right there. But right here's the edge of the metal, and right here's where the hood latch comes in right there. So yeah, you've got to really chop them up pretty good. But that's a video for another day on the other side. I like them. I like a lot of tire hanging out so I don't have to drag any fenders or anything like that. So, and as I mentioned, these tires are equivalent to a 35 1250. They do rub back here in the back whenever I really flex it out pretty hard. I don't care. It's not a big deal to me. I have thought about putting my 33s back on it, but here's my caveat to that. I got the Dana 30 front axle, but I got said WJ Knuckles at home. WJ Knuckles is going to give you the big brake setup. Bigger discs, bigger caliper, dual piston calipers, stuff like that. My concern is if I go to my uh, 33s, which is on a 15-inch wheel, may not be able to fit with my WJ conversion. So I may end up staying with my 35s. I like them, so they're all good. It's just it. If I dropped my 33s, it'd be a lot more sane on the street. Now, when I released the video, I think it, I don't remember if it was the po yeah, it was the posi lock. When I released the video on that, I got a question about hey chuck i thought you locked your front axle all the time now on cad on cad axles it's the central axle disconnect axle you've got the sliding collar that comes back and forth that engages and disengages that little short shaft on the passenger side you can take um hose clamps slide that collar over lock both halves of that shaft together and take a hose clamp hold it in place and you're locked all the time and for you people out there who stress over that stuff 
no, it does not. Uh, you're not in four-wheel drive all the time. Uh, TJs and late model XJs are like that stock. Uh, my buddy's 2000 TJ. It's a solid axle on that side. That's why you read a lot of comments, you know, a lot of Facebook groups and forums and blah, 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 that, hey, do the TJ or XJ axle conversion because that eliminates the cat over there. So to answer all those questions out there that keeps popping up, will it make, mean I'm a four-wheel drive all the time? No, that does not mean you're four-wheel drive all the time. Your transfer case is what tells you whether you're a four-wheel drive or not. By locking those two half shafts together, it's acting as one solid shaft across that, just like a TJ or a um, late model XJ. Now back to my original point, I was asked why are you putting a posi lock in because you lock your axle all the time. Well, now I have a Spartan locker in the front, and there's a lot of questions that pops up on Facebook, Facebook and forums again that if I put a Spartan locker in my front axle, does it make it hard to drive in the winter? Does it make this hard to drive? Does it make this? Does it make a lot of noise? Blah, blah, blah. All the questions that comes along with people who don't know what lockers do. I'm a YouTuber, obviously. By putting the Spartan in and the Posi lock, I can disengage or engage that half that axle over there and kind of as best as it can show you what it's like driving on ice or anything like that or you know wheeling different videos like that so more so than anything i put that posi lock in over there just for the sake of making other videos to answer questions that people ask that's the pro i ain't gonna say yeah i will too that's kind of like the problem with being a youtuber is the fact that you can do things like i'm just gonna do it and get it over with and i i have a set of xj axles at the house i could just slap an xj axle on this thing called a day and not worry about the posi lock but I, I want to answer questions for you guys. Dude, we got mismatching tail lights. There. There. The story behind this one not matching is the fact that I put a pair, like the one over the passenger side on there. I threw a transfer case up and back up to have the dry shaft still attached. And guess what? It smacked a brand new light and busted it. So, I ended up having to get another one. It does have a three inch body lift. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the pros and cons of that right now. Many of you hardcore people out there, there's no goods to a body lift, maybe a one inch at most. And for the most part, I agree with that. But that, those are gonna be a different topic and I'll go over that later because actually I can make a big long video out of that alone. And no, that's not installing. That's just the goods and the bads behind having body lifts. All the first time Jeep owners are driving their rigs around discover it, it's got crappy gas mileage. Look, you've got the aerodynamics of a barn, okay? It ain't gonna happen. You then you start throwing big tires, heavy winches, heavy bumpers. Look, it's just how it is. Turn around. It's always a constant struggle. My exhaust consists of factory header, two and a half inch pipe all the way forward. That Muffler is some kind of Flowmaster knockoff welded thing. It sounds really good. It's kind of like a two-chamber Flowmaster, basically. Uh, there's the 8.8 hanging down there. Some people are concerned with the 8.8 being offset to the passenger side so much. Don't worry about that. It doesn't hurt anything. You don't have to run spacers on your axles. I literally hung this 8.8 under this thing, set my pinion angle, welded it in place, and gone. Using my factory drive shaft and everything. I didn't even alter my drive shaft. Uh, I do need to cut my U-bolts off though before I go wheeling. Any kind of hard school core stuff. I showed you guys that climbing sticker up front. There's one in Nashville. I've done it several times. Big old 40 foot walls. So I mentioned having three inches of body lift, but did I mention about having suspension lift? Well, actually, yes, I do. The suspension lift is actually about two and a half inches roughly, and it came out of a GMC S15 uh, Blazer style. But you can use S10 trucks, S15s, it doesn't matter, as long as it's got the leaf springs in the rear. And what you do is, this leaf right here is the factory YJ leaf, okay? You don't even disconnect it from your hangers, you're good to go. This leaf right here is the main leaf. This is what you call your main leaf, the one with the eyes on it. This is the main leaf out of the S15 and S10 pack. What you do is you cut the eyes, this is what's considered the eye right here, off of your S10 and S15 leaf. Cut the eyes off, and it goes in as your second leaf. Remove the factory YJ second leaf remove it completely trash it whatever you got to do put the s10 leaf in as a second leaf then this one is a yj and this one is a yj but you should replace your u-bolts new centering pins all that fun stuff but i've got videos on that as well and in the rear this is your yj main leaf right here this is your second leaf 
out of the S10, S15 pack, YJ, then YJ. And I need to go ahead and get me set of boom shackles put in back here so I don't bend my leaves. Speaking of boom shackles, that's another topic I need to touch on again because I've got a video explaining how boom shackles work. And even Motobilt uses my video to explain how boom shackles work. But I still got into a discussion in one of the Facebook groups the other day of a guy who wanted to argue with me about it. And I even showed him the video. So I need to booms for this thing, boom shackles for this. But I want to do a more anime style video about boom shackles and how they work and why you need them. And people, please don't get extended shackles. Those lift shackles, don't do that. They bad, 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 bad. Why? I'm not gonna go too deep into it because that's not what this video topic is about. But whenever you get long shackles in front, it messes up your steering geometry, and it just, just don't do it. I'm not gonna go into the whole details in this video. I'll do another video as why extended shackles are bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Now, along with making my fair lead mounts for that winch, or if I do the A274, I've thought about altering my stinger hoop right here because it just looks kind of eh, sticking out there like that. Uh, maybe if I get me a grill hoop come across and the braces like this, it wouldn't look so weird. Just sticking like a big flat tongue stuck out there. It just looks weird. I've also thought about cutting it completely off and shorten it till it's just like a bull bar sitting right above to protect the winch and stuff. I ain't made up my mind. So when I fabricated this bump right here, these right here are actually tied directly to the frame. They're not just welded directly to this metal. This, all this right here is made out of scrap 316ths this bolted straight to the frame this actually goes into the frame and bolted to the frame so these right here are pretty much they are part of the frame that light right there has a daytime running light feature in it which is none of us hooked up anymore once upon a time i had a whole bunch of lights on this thing and it was like we i have lights but it's kind of like you know lights lights before lockers type thing uh the thing was it's because uh, oxbean was sponsoring me they kept throwing stuff at me so i put it on to make the videos because a YouTuber in the beginning, it's fun to get free stuff, okay? It really is. But after a while, you get kind of like, eh. And you really got to be careful promoting products that are subpar. Not that Oxbeam is subpar, because Oxbeam actually has really good stuff. But as I mentioned before, Oxbeam, that Oxmark kept pushing junk on me. And that's when I kind of parted ways, because I didn't want to promote junk. But as I mentioned about lights, now I've got that 52 inch up there, and it's not hooked up. I used to have one on each one of the eight pillars. I used to have one in the middle of the hood and have the jack across the hood. Um, then I had that light bar right there. People, that's just too many daggone lights. It really is totally pointless. My opinion on lights is that the one on the hood coming across here, useless. Because more times than not, you get so much reflection off the hood, it doesn't do you much good. A pillars, only time A pillars to me are handy is that when the point is straight, they're pointless to me. I mean, that's why you got this, or it's why you got one on the front bumper. I'm not a big fan of these coming straight out. But if you take and kick them over a little bit, I don't know, 45-ish or less degrees or something like that, then shining out this way, that can give you a good view of what's in front of you when you're out wheeling and off to the peripheral side of the view right here. The only downside that is, I would prefer to have these set up to where you switch them on and off. Obviously, you would. But if you've got your spotter out there working for you and stuff, and you've got those on, you're going to be blind your spotter. So, not a fan of having all those fancy lights and stuff. But these, if I was to have them again, I'd project them outward a little bit, outward a little bit so I get a little bit of peripheral view. So, any future upgrades do I have in mind? Well, um, definitely the body armor, as I mentioned that earlier. I would like to see, figure out how to set up an onboard welder. I can buy one of those Premier welders, and those things are really cool, but ew, I ain't one of those rich YouTubers. I ain't got that kind of money, okay? Uh, I've seen where people will take alternators and set them up to be welders and stuff. Maybe figure something like that out. That'd be really cool. Um, I have thought about putting air conditioning in this, and not because, oh my gosh, I'm old and I want to buy air conditioning. I really couldn't care less about air conditioning, especially in this. Now, I got my Tahoe. If I want to ride smooth and air conditioning in luxury, I got my Tahoe for that. This thing, I could care less. But the reason I really want to put air in this thing is the fact that the people who do want air, but you want onboard air, uh, onboard air compressor as well. Can you run both of them at the same time? Yes, you can. You'd have to build a certain kind of brackets and blah, 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 blah. So I've thought about if I can find a setup cheap enough that I would put air conditioning in this thing just to show how to set up air conditioning for one. Two, have uh, air conditioning and AC compre uh, air compressor all in the same engine. 
So that's the only reason I have um, air conditioning to begin with. I mean, if I wanted to show how to set up air, AC and air compressor, I could always take a bogus compressor on and just build a bracketry showing you guys how to do it. But again, part of my reason for AC as well is how to set up AC in a Jeep that does not have one. See where I'm going with this? It's about making videos to help you guys. crew it's been a long time since i've done a walk around video of the 1991 yj that started the channel out and i've done so many mods to it since that first walk around video i thought it was time for another one to catch you guys up a little bit maybe some future updates as to what i'm going to do to it and just don't forget i've got rust bucket that's kind of in works right now i've got a jeep cherokee xj body that's going to be converted into a camper and yeah so i've got plenty of cool stuff coming up so everyone if you enjoyed the video of the walk around of this hit me with that thumbs up and if you guys got any kind of recommendations of what else i could do to this hit me down in the comments some of the things i do actually do come from the comments of people you know saying hey if you ought to try this you ought to try that do that as a community for everyone i mean yeah great it helps me out but there's a lot of people he gets on these videos starts reading through the comments and they get ideas from you guys as well so i mean yeah i make videos to help everybody but you guys help a lot too by making cool comments so everyone, appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.